Good morning, and you are most welcome here at St. Helens Catholic Church for today's celebration of our Sunday Eucharist. Today is the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Jesus makes it clear that we will not be judged on what we say, but on what we do. We pray for the grace and wisdom to recognize that it is only through our good actions that we are truly united with God, our Father. Having been richly fed at these two tables, we will send into the world to put our faith into action, to serve those we meet, and especially those in need. May we open our hearts and our minds to the risen Christ, whom we pilgrims meet and serve along the way. Before we begin, we respectfully ask that you please turn off your mobile device or put it on silent mode as we strive to participate fully at the Mass, making it a genuine act of worship of God and respect to others. We would also like to remind you, please, not to chew gum in the church and during receiving the Holy Communion for the respect and the sacredness of the body of Christ. Holy Mass is offered for the soul of Timothy Cox, requested by Virginia Cox. Please rise now and welcome our celebrant Father Lucien and join us in singing with enthusiasm the opening hymn. <laughs> Through 
my bones with his fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Deuteronomy, 
Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live, and you may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations. You will hear of all these statues and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For that great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him. Oh, what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is no alteration 
or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel Commission.
In our church, in our worshiping, we see images, we see all kinds of things, we, we do, we use symbols, gestures, all kinds of things. Ask me, are they important? Yes, they are important. Are they more important? Not really. But are they teaching us something about God, about how to approach God? Yes. But with that, they invite us to go deeper and beyond of the images that we see. The Lord perspective, my friends, looks deeper than that. When a widow put two copper, if you remember, when the widow put two copper coin into the temple treasury, Jesus recognized the tremendous significance of her action. Even though it must have seemed to be a gesture of no significance to others, in fact, most people in the temple at the time will not have noticed her. Never mind noticing that what she did. Yet Jesus, with God's perspective, recognized that her gesture, small as it seems, revealed a big and generous heart. Much of what God's value in today's people's lives, my friend, may not recognized as significant by most people, and may go largely unnoticed by others. It may never make headlines. What you do in the church and for the church, it may never go, you know, noticed. But you do it for the glory of God. You do it for your fellow human being. You do it for your community. But deep within yourself, you do it because you love the Lord. You love God. And you love God's people. You love His church. In today's gospel message, Indeed, today gospel message and invite us to put things in the right place. To put aside what is incidental and non-essential. To go beyond all kind of practices. To get to the bottom of the soul. Deep in people's hearts. To welcome the best gifts that come from above. As St. Paul tells us, St. James tells us in the second reading. James says the best gifts, the marvelous presents come from above. They all come down from the Father of our light. This is a beautiful phrase to remind us that the gifts you will receive is not our own gifts. All these gifts, my friend, they are graces from God, grace from the Lord. Jesus here discussing in the gospel with the authority of the day about washing washing of hands before meals washing of hands before meals today we are living a reality a reality that none of us can you know can escape from it we cannot escape from it we see with the pandemic we are currently experiencing that this is not trivial. Hands washing, you know, washing of hands eh, has become a mandatory practice everywhere. And because of the dangers of the contagion from COVID, we use cream, we use hand sanitizer, and we use it for a purpose, we use it for a reason. To protect life, to protect others, our brothers and sisters. For the Jews of Jesus, for the Jews of Jesus' time, it was not only a half practice, but also a religious prescription that cannot be avoided under any circumstances. They made it an, an absolute obligation. Jesus bring a nuance. Here and uh, he does not make it a religious absolute. That's what we should understand. So he lets his disciples go over this prescription. Let us be. Let us remember this. 
Jesus here does not say not to wash your hands. He eh? does not say not to wash your hands. He does not say not to wear your mask. But he takes advantage of this discussion to give a message. Here it is in two words what is characteristic of his disciples and therefore of us Christians today. Is that religion and morality go together? There is no separation, my brothers and sisters. The external rights and the external behaviors to do well, it must go with the hearts. It must go with the hearts, with the interior, within. Ask yourself why? Why? Because Jesus wants us to adjust our behavior according to what we believe. Or in other words, that what we believe is manifested in our actions. We cannot serve the Lord just by our lips. It is very important. It invites us to go beyond practices and rights. As St. James will say in his marvelous letter of which we have just read for you. Before God our Father, the pure and irreproachable way of practicing religion is to come to the aid of orphan, widow, in the misfortune. You go to the aid of the poor, those less fortunate, those who are suffering from injustice. And from injustice in the only, not in their own, but sometimes we cause their own suffering from our corruption, from our attitude. This is what a religion that is not the father, a religion that leads us to God. It is a religion that always opens the door for others to recognize the presence of God in the way we, we are living our life, in the way we are giving testimony, in the way we are witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We make the gospel of Jesus Christ alive in our life. And the other may see the presence of God in you. And this is a mission of the church to make Christ present to us but the church could not do it without you without you giving testimony giving witnesses to the gospel to leave the gospel that being said speaking of this message from Jesus we should not judge the world around us because sometimes the external action taken can be explained in various ways and only God searches the hearts. Only God knows the hearts. Only God knows the soul. Only God knows what is going within you. That's why it is very important we need to be cautious, to be prudent before we cast judgment on our brothers and sisters. I'm thinking about all the things of all our grandparents, your mom, your dad, who perhaps seems to do nothing but exterior gesture, exterior religious practices, or encourage you to pray. Encourage you to do a rosary. Encourage you to come to the church. To come to church. Encourage you to participate in a group. Encourage you to give you wit to give witness to others wherever you go. Or encourage you to wear a, a cross. Encourage you to wear your rosary in your pocket or do your rosary. All these external signs should express an internal reality, something that is happening deep within yourself. Something that says, 
something about you. What kind of person you are? Who are you? But you say your behavior, it reflects on our behavior, on my attitude, in the way that I am interacting, in the way I live, in the way I take my responsibility. So my friends today, the gospel invites us that we need we need to put God's perspective before us. We need to value what God's values. How we do that? How do we do that? In the past, there were, you will remember, or you can remember the examination of conscience. The examination of conscience that we are invited to do in the evening before going to bed. How many parents, how many of us, how many of you remember to do that before we go to bed? Before we go to bed, to now to ask yourself. Now perhaps we should think about restoring some of you know form of self-examination. As St. Pope Francis invited us, saying, to have a collected heart, a heart in which we know what is going on in here and there. We can exercise an ancient but effective practice of, of the church, the, ex the examination of conscience. Who among us in the evening before finishing the day? And sit on your bed in your room and asking yourself these very important questions. What happened today in my life? What happened today in my family? What happened today in my friends? With my friends? What happened today at work? Do I touch some people's life? Do I, do I make Christ present? Or am I being a good witness? Am I being a good example? Am I bring, you know, am I bringing joy? Or did I bring joy? Do I make, did I make someone smile today? Did I take my responsibility in my job? These are very important questions, my friends. What happened in my life? What happened in my heart? What is going on in my heart? What does my heart tell me? What happened? Don't be afraid to ask these questions. What emotion went through my heart? If we don't go there, we don't do this. We won't be able to look after or protect our hearts well. And we will not be able to protect even our brothers and sisters. If we don't stop occasionally, we fall asleep. We avoid questioning ourselves. We take habit that imprison us or keep, we keep putting off until later. The Word of God today invites you and I to Jesus to stop, to stop, to question our motive, to shed light on what is inside of us. But Jesus wants it about acting with inner, our inner freedom, our own, on our own, taking our responsibility seriously. We need the grace of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it alone. We need the help of God. And we have to recognize, my friends, our own perspective can be limited at times. Our own perspective can fall short. That's why we need to rely on God. Sometimes our judgment lead us astray from away from God. 
We need the presence of God. We need wisdom. We need understanding. As the first meetings are said, to form our intelligence, our mind. And then not to think the way the world thinks, to think with the mind of God, to see things with the mind of God, with the eyes of God, with the eyes of faith. And it is very important, it is crucial for us, my friends, as Christians, as Catholics, as sons and daughters of God, as brothers and sisters of Christ, to really look at things the way Christ looked at things. So let us ask for the Lord. His grace, His strength, courage, the gifts of the Holy Spirit for us to put things into perspective and to focus on things that are essential. And whatever that is not essential, you flush them out from your life, from whatever. But you focus on what is important. Things that will bring you joy. Things that will keep you close to the heart of God. Things that will make you a better man, a better woman, a better sons, a better daughters, a better Christians, a better parishioners, a better you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, God
We pray for those who have lost their lives this week by the terrorist attack in Afghanistan. May the Lord grant them eternal rest and consolation to their families and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. We remember our young people who returned to start, to start the school year. We pray, Lord, that through their advice, guidance from their parents and teachers, they learn to respect, love, and care of, for each other. And those studying at universities commit to learn and be rewarded, and that they can move forward in life with confidence and with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. We pray for the people of Haiti, for those who have died, and for those who have lost loved ones in the last week's tragic earthquake. May they find the help, may they find the help they need to rebuild their lives with dignity, peace, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May they be healing for the sick, comfort to the dying, peace of mind for those in distress because of the pandemic, and relief for those in financial crisis. May under our blessed mother protection, doctors, nurses, and all medical health professionals find comfort, protection, and strength they need to help their brothers and sisters in hospitals, nursing homes, and those at home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and those intentions of those who have asked for their prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying. Father of light, giver of every good and perfect gifts, Bring to fruition the word of truth, Son, in our hearts by your Son, that we may rightly understand your commandments. Leave your law of love, and so offer you worship that is pure and undefiled. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. We ask for this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as the exaltation we acclaim. In a similar way, supper was handed, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the word of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, while taking on the body and blood of Christ, we may be guarded to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Francis Thomas, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bishop E. Sansaric, Angelique Docteur, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died for your mercy, we pray for the cause of the soul of Timothy Cox. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints in heaven who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may marry to be co heirs for eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious, to get peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always in confidence from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, "We are apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you." Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My dear beloved, let us share with one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him, takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, may the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us to eternal life. Oh, no. 
first time. If you would like to be a member of our parish, please take a registration form at the main entrance of the church. Please fill it in and give it to one of the ushers or ministers of hospitality. Or you can pass by the office Monday through Fridays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Important reminders. Masks are still mandatory to enter the church. Sanitation is a must. Hand sanitizers are available at the entrance of each door against the wall. Please use it before entering and leaving the church. Protect yourselves and protect one another to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. St. Helen's School is still accepting new applications for kindergarten, first grade, fifth and sixth grade, VPK, step up and triple A scholarships are available. For more information, please call our school office at 954-739-7094, extension 2002. Religious Education Program for 2021 to 2022 will start in September. Sacramento preparation requires two years of continuous religious education. For First Communion preparation, the child must be at least seven years old. For Confirmation preparation, the child must be entering the sixth grade. All students must register every year, even if they have already registered last year. Please contact the parish office for more information on the 2021 to 2022 registration forms. Thank you. On Sunday, September the 5th, 2021, the second collection for Catholic University of America. Second collection, help the church in Haiti serve her people. To help the church in Haiti to be able to continue serving the Haitian people, I would ask that a second collection be taken up in your parishes, either this weekend, August the 21st and 22nd, or the next, August 28th and 29th. Again, these funds would be used to help the church to continue to serve her people by helping to rebuild the church, the church's necessary infrastructure, and to rebuild, to resist any future cyclonic or seismic events. Thank you, Archbishop Thomas Wensky. Please take a copy of this Sunday bulletin for more information and activities. Thanks again, and have a blessed day and be safe going home. Thank you very much. Let us pray. <laughs> Renewed with by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended go in peace to serve and love the Lord and love one another. Thanks. My dear beloved, may you have a wonderful and blessed week with the Lord and protect yourself. Amen.